Personas are the main focus of the furry fandom. They're what make us stand out from other fandoms. Rather than dressing up as characters that already exist, we portray ourselves as characters we've made up. Sometimes, it can be a little hard to come up with that character though. Hello everyone, I'm Solar Saber, and today I'll be giving you some helpful tips on making a fursona. Feel free to adjust my advice to your taste, as I'll be going over my personal character making process. I know many people have a lot of trouble deciding what species they want their fursona to be. You can always go with your favorite animal, but some people prefer not to do that. Panthers are my favorite animal, but my fursona is a saber-toothed tiger. Why? Because I like how the teeth look on sabers, and thought Venus's design would look better on a tiger rather than a panther. These are things you need to think about when choosing your species. You could also pick a species that relates to your personality. Are you brave and courageous? Pick a lion. Are you maybe a little more shy and cautious? An otter would be a cute choice. As for the personality of a character, I normally get inspiration from songs. I'll put a character I made a few years ago on the screen and play the song that inspired him. The feelings I got from this song translated into that character. I also get inspiration from shows and video games. One of my personas, Archer, wasn't exactly based on Guzma from Pokemon, but the more I draw her, the more I realize I'm making her personality more like his. Guzma's theme song also just screams Archer to me. Another character I made is a lioness heavily based on Jevil from Deltarune. Using shows, video games, and even movies for inspiration is absolutely fine as long as you're not ripping off a character completely. Colors and markings are the part I have the most difficulty with. I'm not the best at designing, which is why it gives me so much trouble. I find it best to look at a color palette to make sure your colors correlate with each other, and just add markings as you go. If your character has a more wild personality, it would be best to make their markings messy as well, such as random stripes. If your character is neat and organized, you should make their markings symmetrical and clean. Or maybe your character is good at manipulating people, you could make their markings cute and neat to completely contrast from their personality. Patterns and markings can say a whole lot about your character's personality, so make sure you choose them wisely. If you want to eventually get a fursuit of your fursona, you have a lot more things you need to think about. Sure, you can make your fursona a neon-colored rainbow, but that will make the price of a fursuit skyrocket. Natural colored furs are less expensive and easier to find, such as brown, black, gray, or white. Colors such as purple or green are most likely going to be more expensive. The more markings and different colors you have on your character will also make the price go up. If your character has gradient markings, those will normally have to be airbrushed onto a fursuit. Airbrushed parts cannot go in a washing machine, so you'd have to hand wash those pieces very carefully or just avoid getting them dirty. If your character has a lot of white on it, you'll also need to be careful. Stains and dirt show up easiest on white fur. If you just decide that you can't design a character at all for some reason, you could always buy a design from someone. Adoptables are sold on DeviantArt, Fur Affinity, and Twitter all the time. I didn't say furry amino because usually the designs sold there are stolen. Buying a design can save you a lot of time and effort, plus you're supporting an artist. And those are my tips on making a fursona. Were they helpful? Tell me in the comments. And remember, shine bright.